Bienvenidos, who's Jean Deed, and welcome to another Netacad Introduction to Python course supplemental video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at lab 3.1.2.10, where we're going to see the continue statement and the ugly vowel eater. In other words, A, E, I, O, and U are going to be eaten when they present themselves in the user input for a string. So let's dive in and take a look at the activity as it appears here in the course. You can see we've got some code that's already provided over here. The level of difficulty is easy. It should take 10 to 15 minutes. We'll see if we can't shrink that a little bit. Now, the lab is asking us to use the continue statement in the for loop. And it also wants us to use the if l if. So we're going to be doing that as well. So the continue statement is used to skip the current block and move ahead to the next iteration without executing the statements inside the loop. In other words, as soon as we hit continue, we're going to go right back to the next letter, right? So when we say for, think of it like this, for each letter in user word. So this activity is kind of prompting us here that we're going to be using user word as the variable. And so for each of the letters in the word, in other words, in the string, we can iterate through those letters because a string is iterable, right? We can iterate over each of the characters in a string, just like when we use the range function. When we said for number in range uh, one comma six, right? And then it would print out one, two, three, four, five. And so we can do the same thing here, except with a string, which is a string literal that simply has a series of characters in it. Now, I mentioned previously methods. Well, we're actually going to be using a method here, and let's see if you can figure out how this might have applied to the previous lab and activity that we looked at, which was 3.1.2.9, when I made reference to the string methods. So let's go ahead and let's dive in here and let's pull this code together. Again, we're being asked to use if, elif, else. And so what we're going to be checking for is we're checking to see are any of the letters or is the letter that we are looking at is that a capital A, E, I, O, and U? Now, why? We're going to leave that out of the debate for an English class at some point. Uh, so we're just looking for A, E, I, O, and U, the most common vowels that we would be looking for uh, in a string. So let's go ahead and come over here to the Integrated Development Learning Environment, IDLE. And real quickly, remember, if I was to say for number in range, and let's say 1, 6, whoops, sorry, 1, 6, and then I just simply said print number, we would get all of those numbers one, two, three, four, and five. Remember, inclusive on the left hand side, exclusive on the right hand side with the range function. Now, let me ask you this What if I wanted to say four number in range, one, comma, six? Oops, sorry about that. And I wanted to print the numbers, but I want them all on the same line. How would we do that? Yeah we would use that keyword argument, right? End equal, because the default, this is showing me the default values. The default separator is, excuse me, the space. The default end of line character, right, is gonna be a new line or a carriage return, right? So if I was to say number comma end equal, and then simply put double uh, single quotes there, that would put the numbers on the same line. So I just want to throw that in real quick. Give us something to think about here as we work through the problem. So let's prompt the user to enter a word. Now, we know we're going to be using to capture that input, right? The input the user gives us. We're going to be using user word as our variable name. And we're doing camel case, starting out with lowercase. And so let's say input. Uh, and what are we going to say here? How about please enter any word, right? And it's going to be captured uh, in user word. Now, 
it says here, assign it to the user word variable. Well, we did that, but remember, we've got a requirement. And one of the requirements is use this method. And the method is the upper, open parent, close parents. It's going to convert the word that was entered into all uppercase characters. Now, if you're wondering, is, well, is there a method for lower? Absolutely. You could convert it to all lowercase or all uppercase by using the method, respectively, right, upper or lower. And that's going to convert the word. I'm actually going to add an extra line of code in to sort of print out what the result is going to be here for user word. So let's go ahead and let's add that code in. We're going to say uh, user word is going to get or be assigned the value of user word dot upper. And again, I could have said user word dot lower if I wanted to work with lowercase characters. Now, right here, I'm going to add an extra line of code in here. And we're just going to print user word so that you can see uh, that it has been converted from lowercase. And let's add another print statement in here. And sometimes you can do this when troubleshooting. I'm doing it here just for demonstrative purposes. These two print statements of user word, you're going to see it here. It's going to be all lowercase. We then convert it with the string method upper to uppercase. And I print it out here to show you that that's actually what happened. So now we need to com uh, complete the rest of the code in the for loop. Now, remember, we're being asked, and let's do this here. So for, oops, sorry. So for letter in user word. And remember, over here, they're asking us to use uh, the if, l, if, and else. And so what are we checking for? Well, we're checking, right, to see is the letter that we are iterating over at that point in the string, is it a vowel? So I would go ahead and I could say if letter, and this is going to give us some good practice here. Now, if the letter is a capital A, so I could use a logical or to maybe consolidate this code a little bit. But I, the, the, the spirit of the exercise and the activity is that we use if, elif, uh, and the continue statements. And so if, oops, sorry, continue. So if the letter that we're iterating over in the word at this time is a capital A, I want to continue. And what that means is it doesn't mean break out of the for loop. It simply means go back to the for loop and iterate over the next letter in the string, right? And so if the letter is a capital A, and then what about L if the letter is a capital E, A E, make sure we get that in there. Uh, and then we're going to continue. And L if the letter is a cap, oops, sorry, I'll use a single tick there, A, E, I. Then we would just continue, right? Just go right back to the next iteration of the force. So continue to the next iteration uh, of this loop. L if letter is A, E, I, O. I had to think about that for a second there. Continue or L if letter is A-E-I-O-U. Now remember, Y is being left out. Uh, and we're going to continue again. Now, if it's not a capital A, and it's not a capital E, or a capital I, or a capital O, or a capital U, then we know that it's not a vowel. And again, leaving the argument about the letter Y out of this. So what would I say? I know that that's a letter that I want to print because it is not a vowel. And remember, pull the drawing tool up here for a second. Unlike break, right? If these, if the continues said break, as soon as uh, we had a true test, right? As soon as we found a vowel, if this said break right here, we would then come down and execute the next line of code that lined up outside and after 
the for loop. But we're not using break. We're saying continue, right? We're iterating through something here. And when we find what we're looking for, capital A, E, I, O, or U, then we just continue because we're looking for the non-vowels that are in this string, this word that's going to be entered in. So let's go ahead. Let's save what we've got here. And let me take a quick look. I think that is everything. Print the uneaten letters to the screen each of them on a separate line. And that's going to be the default, but we'll take a look and see uh, what happens if we change that up a little bit. And then let me put down here outside of the for loop so that you can see that it only is going to print this once the for loop is totally done, because the continue statements are not going to trigger an exit of the loop. So we are now outside of the for loop. And again, I'm sort of add on here, right? A little extra information. Let's hit F5. Let's save our file. And now it wants any word. So we'll say Gregory. Now, remember, that was what the user entered in. Here is what it looks like after we've used the string method upper to convert everything to uppercase. And so as we iterate, so for each of the letters in the user word Gregory, which are all uppercase, if it's an A, E, I, O, or U, we just go to the next iteration in the loop. It's only when it's not a vowel, right, the else catch-all here at the bottom that we ultimately print that letter out. So we get G, R, G, R, Y. Let's run it again, and we'll say F5, and they've got a really bizarre word here, abstemious. And I do not know what that word means. So let's go ahead and say abstemious. And you can see that that's what the user entered in. Here is what it looked like after being converted to all uppercase. And here are the consonants. And now we're outside of the loop, right? And that's the difference between the continue and the break. In fact, let me go ahead and put break here, right? And so if we're looking for an A, and so let me rerun this file here. We'll say F5, I'll click OK, and I'll say abstemious. Now, what is going to happen here? What is going to be printed out? So remember, it's going to print out the word in all lowercase for us, or as, I should say as entered, and it is in all lowercase. Then it's going to convert it to all uppercase, and then we're going to iterate. We're going to go to the first letter, and that first letter is an A, a capital A. So what's going to happen? We're going to break out of the loop. So is any letter going to be printed or are we simply going to say we are now see that we are now outside of the for loop? We are now outside the for loop. And so that's the difference between break and continue. Break is going to kill the loop right there on the spot as soon as that condition is true. And that's exactly what you saw. The first letter is an A. And so we break out of the loop. We come all the way outside the for loop to the next line of code that lines up with the for loop here, this indentation that we've got. And that's the line of code that's going to be executed. So your final solution set, right, using the continues is going to be that. We wanted to take a look at the difference, compare and contrast, continue and break, because these tend to cause some confusion with learners in terms of what is going to happen with the loop. And so hopefully that has cleared things up. Now, I talked about the logical or, and what you could have done is if letter is A or if letter is a e and again you wouldn't need all of this code sorry you wouldn't need all this code down here if you wanted to do the compound um i'm sorry the logical or statement here and say if it's an a or it's an e or it's an i or it's an o or it's you so again we wanted to use the if if just again get you to think outside the box as to how maybe you would use some of these other python keywords uh, that could be of value. So let's pull this back and we'll leave it right there. All right, well, that is going to wrap up Lab Activity 3.1, 
2.10, where we looked at the continue statement, we did a quick compare and contrast with how the continue behaves in a loop and how the break statement behaved in the loop. And we saw how we could go through and match certain letters or find certain letters in that iterable sequence of characters and sort of continue and just skip over those and not print those out. All right, thank you so much for watching. All the best of you, uh, all the best to you in your studies, and I hope to see you in the next video.